Let us chant Namo Dasa to start off the session. Namo Dasa Bhagavatu Arahatu Sampa Namo Dasa Bhagavatu Arahatu Sampa Sambundasa Namo Dasa Bhagavatu Arahatu Sampa Sambundasa all right, page number 164, we are starting from the, the, the first paragraph. Lady Searo explains that it is in these constant processes that distinct recognition of the object occurs. Distinct recognition of the object occurs. Such recognition does not occur in the bare Five door process itself. An IDO process, for example, is followed first by a conformational mind door process, which reproduces in the mind door the object just perceived in the sense door process. Then comes to a process grasping the object as a whole, as a whole. Grasp in the process as a whole. Then a process recognizing the color, then a process grasping the entity, then a process recognizing the entity, then a process grasping the name, then a process recognizing the name. The process grasping the object as a whole. So I hope that in your notes, as I mentioned last week, that you were able to sort of compile a graph of sorts where you would be able to recognize this sort of, uh, uh, or sort of understand this with a uh, sort of a um, image like picture, because when it comes to this specific part is very important when it comes to really your meditation. Right, and also this is going to be repeated later on um, when we, if and when we progress uh, on the study of Abhidhamma. Right? Uh, does anyone have a question with regards to what that paragraph that we have just covered? All right, let's go continue, and if you have a question, you can ask. The process grasping the object as a whole is the mind or process perceiving the whole, perceiving as a whole the forms repeatedly perceived in individual frames by the two preceding processes. Again, <clears throat> The process grasping the object as a whole is the mind or process perceiving as a whole the forms repeatedly perceived in the individual, in individual frames by two preceding processes. The original sense door process and the conformational mind door process. Right, the original sense door process, which was a process which arose at the mind door, at the eye door, and then the mind door process, which occurred at the mind door, taking as object what the the object that was just cognized by the eye, right, by the eye door or at the eye door. This process exercises, exercises a synthesis function, fusing the perception of distinct, distinct shots of the object into the perception of the unity. I have, uh, Venerable Aridama used to explain this as, a, as a, um, those real cameras. Hmm? how the light reflects upon, uh, you call it a reel, yes? The reel that you put into the camera, yeah? Isn't it the reel? Yeah, you yeah. Call it? Yes, Bhante. <laughs> this, this was earlier than my age, you see. <laughs> it, 
it's, it's no longer yeah. used back then. No. No. <laughs> the iPhones now. The film, the film. I think they call it the film cameras, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. the film roll. Uh, the film roll. Uh, all are getting the excited. <laughs> the film roll into a box camera or any yes. other camera. Yeah. So, uh, remember, Bante, it, it, yeah, it's yeah, almost uh, like yeah. snapshot, yeah. Yes, like, it's like, like snapshot, when, light, when it yeah. is taken, yeah, how it would, how the reflection of the light would create that image upon the film, yeah, yeah, right. That's the example that Venerable Aridamma, mm -hmm. uh, I have heard him explaining mm -hmm. back, right? Shot of the object into the perception of a unity. As in the case of a whirling firebrand perceived as a circle of fire, right? This is talking about the fire kasina. If you, um, no, we haven't, have we done this? No, we haven't done this in this class, but in the fire kasina, one of the modes or ways that we perceive the fire kasina is to, it is said, you, um, you have a hole in the wall or you have a board with a hole in it. Uh, emptied out circle, a sphere, circle. And then you have a fire which is sort of lit behind it. The flame of the fire sort of covering that space of the hole in the wall, which gives you the perception of a fire in a secular sort of object-like image. You understand, right? So, so that is what they're talking about. It's, they're talking about the kasina, the fire kasina, right? Although the fire is a different object, but because of the ball shaped or the hole in the ball shaped in that manner, the fire and that sort of emptied out ball gives the perception or is unites to give us the perception of a fire kasina. Do you get that, right? That is what it's saying. That both of that, the hole in the wall and the fire coming together to give us a certain perception of how it is. Yeah. Now, can you apply that to the mind? What is happening here? The chakudwara taking that shot, the manodwara again taking that object of the chakudwara and then uniting to give us a particular sense or image of what that object is. Got it? Any questions? Okay. Um, it is only when this has occurred that recognition of the color is possible. I see blue. When the recognition, what does that mean? It is only when these two happen together that the record that recognition is possible. What is recognition? Recognition is the reapplication of knowledge once learned. Isn't it? You know, so we have learned that this color is uh, white. So we recognize it as white, right? It is not that this color is the true essence of the meaning of the word. There is no meaning in this. We have given it a sense of meaning and truth, isn't it? Right? And recognizing and reminding yourself of what you have learned, of what you have learned, gives you the way or sort of helps you to recognize what is at hand, right? That is what it's saying, right? All right. When the, record, um, when the recognition of the entity occurs, one recognizes color. I'm sorry. Uh, recognize the entity. It is only okay. when this has occurred that recognition of color is possible. When the recognition of color occurs, one recognizes color, I see blue. When the recognition of entity occurs, one recognizes the entity or shape. What does that mean? Now, when you are so familiar with a person, for example, let us say your partner, your husband, your wife, you know, you see that person from afar, from the silhouette of that person's shape itself, you can say, oh, that looks like my husband or that looks like my wife, right? You're so familiar with that form. Why? Because again, similar to the color, similar to the color, right? You have an image, a perception of what that person looks like. 
to such a degree that of course for example there are there are other people with similar sort of body frames and shapes and sizes and length and height and all of that however your memory of this person your perception of this person is detailed to such an extent in your memory that you're able to pick out pick out it's like for example um if 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 one is to have twins identical twins the parents always know who from who you know <laughs> hopefully <laughs> if not if not <laughs> we class them as bad parents <laughs> <laughs> right but the parents always are able to in most instances i would say are able to tell the difference between the children right so why is that because of the details that of you know the personality or the little little different that other people are unable to pick by right and i think for example i remember when i first went to burma and being exposed to so many oriental faces right everyone looked the same <laughs> <laughs> but, but as you sort of you know live in the country right then sort of you see the difference you start seeing the difference mm-hmm. right you start seeing the difference also mm-hmm. another thing is now uh, sri lankans and also in 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 english the languages that we would often be used to or south asians would be used to um, we have flat tones in burma they have the high tone the low tone the glottal stop and uh, there is one more tone the flat tone right so they have four tones in vietnamese they have seven tones i think i wonder the chinese have tones but i know vietnamese have seven tones burmese have four tones now we can't now for example if i am to give you an example um ye 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 right now though that is four words there right that is four words there however when we first learned it it's the same thing right one means water one means policeman one means to i can't remember the meaning of the other two but one means water one means policeman right but stay being with the language you then have that sensitivity but at first it's the same thing right it's the same thing it's something of that sort it's something of that sort so the, that level of recognition really right that level of recognition all right moving on um when the recognition of name occurs one recognizes a name thus lady saro asserts it is only when a recognitional process referring to one or another specific feature occurs that one knows i see this or that specific feature okay i see this or that specific feature any questions bante this is really um it's moving from cognition to recognition yeah yeah it's a process moving from cognition to recognition okay so so actually to recognize the object once you get all these um uh in case of chakwinyane chakwinyane and followed by the um uh manodwarajan chitavitis or four of them mm. okay i'm just checking the uh the definition relating to cognition adjective the cognitive part involving in reading well the thing is of course i mean i'm not sure i don't feel like moving from cognition to recognition is a uh-huh. use of the word okay you know uh, because recognition is also a cognitive process right but however i understand what you're trying to say it is rather from grasping an object to object recognition recognition yeah right that you grasp the object or take an object from an external source meaning through the five sense doors yeah. to then being able to apply that object in terms of what you know about it that's right yeah right so, so yes so one thing the, the one thing the, the, what comes first recognition or the cognition recognition first and then the cognition isn't it cognition cognition comes first it has to know 
because you have to have an object to sort of mix with or sort of recognize to recognize yeah you have to have an object to work with right so what really what what really it is what what it is really doing is it's taking an object and it is evaluating that object by the past perceivable or the frameworks that we have put in place to recognize such objects right so so really it is not even the truth it is what we hold as the truth regarding the object right regarding the object understood yes. yeah yes. can i ask question go padma go can ahead. i ask yeah yes padma can i ask uh, <laughs> so all this depends on memory then isn't it it is all dependent second, on, on our memory part. the second part okay thank you yeah the the uh, what was the process called uh, the second part was called uh, uh, just as the word yes. mentions a confirmational mind process yeah right where did that a confirmational mind process where is that oh yeah at that tadanuvartika tadanuvartika yeah tadanuvartika tadanuvartika yes that's the one Yes. The, the, the second and one. One thing, I, it de- depends on each individual how they recognize the object. Is that how, right? How yes. they have been? I would, I would rather rephrase that they become by saying how we have been taught to recognize an object. Ah, uh, right. Okay. Right. I think okay. how how we would we have been programmed. how we would have been programmed you know it is you know for example it is like this isn't it now as sri lankans now you take for example if we are to take sri lankans we are we have the sri lankans you know like us who have most of us who have grown up in sri lanka who have eaten a lot of chili again my cooking examples <laughs> <laughs> who have eaten a lot of chili then you get these kalusud the sri lankans here who can't eat chili who are a disgrace to sri lankans <laughs> i'm joking <laughs> but but you get what i mean but however however they have you know these are your children your grandchildren right they can't eat chili as much as we have right so there i feel again the way that we have been programmed to accept or reject that level of chili that we would have right so it is not the truth it is what we believe is the truth of program to see as what our internal levels of um of uh, what's the word um um uh, levels are i mean the proper word is not coming to me right it is not like that intelligence each person no, 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 no. condition 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 uh bante and chili <laughs> the condition to eat chili isn't it uh conditioning it's really conditioning. conditioning right it really is the conditioning it is really the extent to which it is for example it is like a person who 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 trains himself who who is able to maybe possibly hold their breath or something like that you know it is possibly uh, things that for example even like in meditation the longer that you are able to stay the self doubt that affects the period of meditation that you can comfortably sit down right they say that with the with the flexibility of mind or the malleability of mind the malleability of body is affected right now it is it is all to do with that programming that we are set so within the, within this process, process it is really recognizing the preset program right however are we able to create new programs how are we able to reprogram ourselves of course we are yes. of course we are right that is where then it is said that with higher levels of attention right if we if we put aside all the pettiness if we go into the causes of suffering and happiness it is said that the real stabilizers of happiness within one's brain can be affected through focus mindfulness based focus enabling a person to then this is nothing to do with education this is nothing to do with uh, this is nothing to do with the family background so what you are daily 
daily exposed to this is really to do with the attention or how well you are able to grasp an object which is focus oriented it is right i think i mentioned this earlier with regards to the neuro set points that they speak about right how neuro set points are only affected they have found not by social class or belt or comfort but it is only affected or can be maneuvered or changed only by uh, mindfulness which is effectively focus according to those definitions sati right all right shall we move on then yes thank you um, Bante. Bante, at the top of page 164 it says this is a process is uh, fivefold but there are six points uh, in the next paragraph okay hold on let me see okay <sighs> They, they are counted as FIFO by way of the five central process which they follow. All right. Now, what is that? Let's just as when a gong is struck by a baton, the gong sends forth a continuous stream of reverberations. So when one of the five sense doors has been impinged upon one by the sense object after the five door process has ceased, the past sense objects comes into range at the mind door and sets off many sequences of mind door processes because these cognitive processes come as a sequel to the five door processes. They are known as consequent processes, which are which is referring to those uh, processes which follow that taking of that shot, right? Uh, they are counted as fivefold by way of the five sense door processes which they follow, mm -hmm. right? So let's let's see the IDO process in the next paragraph. The IDO process, for example, is followed by a conformational mind door process, Tadanuvartika mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Then comes a uh, uh, grasping of the object as a whole, Samudaya yeah. two, yeah. Yeah. right? And then it's the color, the right? and yeah. then it's the entity. Right, yeah. and then yeah. Mr. Nama. Yeah. Five. Yes. Mm. Yeah, what I make is the first one is grasping the object as a whole, yeah. then recognizing the object. Yeah. Number three is grasping the entity, and then number four is recognizing the entity, and number five is grasping the no, name, no. and number six no is recognizing the, the name. Of the entity. Not those ones. It's a sense though. Grasping is sense do. Recognizing is mind do. Oh. <laughs> you you have to grasp it, no? Now, for example, do do not take it as when you look at something, you are taking everything about it. No. Right? When you look at it, you're taking first, according to Lady Seattle, first what is taken is the object as a whole, which is a generic process. Then it focuses on certain aspects, the shape, the entity, it is mentioned, the entity, the color, right? Um, the color, the name, right? Those are recogn recognized uh, processes that you do to recognize certain elements of the object which helps to derive or come into a conclusion with regard to that specific object. So we only take or what is to be taken are the mind of processes which follow the five sense to processes, which is the parts where it uses the word recognize, not grasping, because grasping is the taking of the object. Right? Is the taking of the object, is that clear? Yeah, thanks, Bhante. Okay. Samantha, yes? Uh, yes, Bhante. Uh, I'm not sure whether this is um, appropriate here uh, or not. I was just thinking, um, you know, um, like when you have the object in the suttas, I suppose, I'm referring to, they, they refer to Sampa, Janna, and Yonisi Manasikara. Um, so clear comprehension and that uh, attention. So would we at this stage apply that as well? And if that's the case, how, what does that exactly mean? All right. Clear, Yon Sumanskara, Ayon Sumanskara. Is that, that is what your comprehension by way of comprehension? Sampajana and the Yoni Sikara. 
you know, you got sati awareness, and then you got they say that awareness sati alone is not enough. You need to have some pajana, uh, yeah. clear some pajana, clear comprehension. So what exactly does that mean? And well, then you have to add a bit of yonizi manizikara as well. So what, what okay. how would that fit in? All right. So first of all, yonizi manizikara. Yoni yeah. manzikara, manzikara, not yoni so, manzikara. Yeah. Manzikara yeah. is a part of the mindo process or the manodwara vajana or the mindo adverting process which happens in each and every conscious process. Right? Mm -hmm. Remember, something that we must understand is with regards to all these processes, mm -hmm. Just as explained in this paragraph that we are going through now, these processes do not evaluate the entirety of the whole object. It is done partly. It is yeah. done partly. So really, when it adds up to the conclusion that we arrive regarding that object, it is all derived in a manner where part by part, contributes to the conclusion we arrive at regarding that object. Do you yeah. understand what I... Yeah, like, like in a film, uh, like little clips, you know, in a film you have little uh, something like that, like, you know, clips, clips, there, and then you get, eventually get the whole picture, I suppose. Exactly, 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 Samantha. Lovely example. Thank you for that, right? Okay. Just oh, wow. like, okay. <laughs> uh, just like that, Yes. The Manodwara Vajana process or the Mindo adverting process is where the Manskar stands. Right? As we progress along different uh, different types and different sort of elements of focus with regards to cognition, this word we know changes. Right? However, regardless of the change, regardless of the change, what it really does it, it sort of applies the mind in a certain direction of cognition. Do I comprehend this in a positive manner? Do I comprehend this in a negative manner, right? Or to whatever schemes of thought that I am used to. I am used to. For example, now we have different, as if I may take an example, we have Buddhist practitioners, some of whom, let's say there are meditators, we have ardent meditators, and then we also have Buddhists who are pious and who would be quite happy with the ritualistic practices. Um, uh, I'm sorry, um, um, uh, um, yes, the ritualistic, cultural, traditional practices as well, right? We have both of these classes of Buddhism. Of course, there are other Buddhists as well who do different things. We are just focusing on these two, right? Now, in, in light of the, now the meditator might think that their practice is higher, right? Mm -hmm. The person who is doing the charity, the person who is doing the traditional cultural aspects of fulfilling that aspect of Buddhism might think that that practice is higher, yeah. right? Now this, when we compare ourselves, we have an issue. However, in that, when we compare ourselves, However, in that person's mind, regardless of who this person is, whether the meditator or the, uh, uh, the, the sort of the pious practitioner who is into the uh, culture and traditional part of it, you know, with the knowledge and the knowledge backing that they have to promote their practice, whatever that it is that whatever that they have chosen to do is standardized by their knowledge. Mm. which makes it higher or the best that they could possibly do. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So that is that. That is it. Mm. When we compare ourselves, we might find an issue where we come and we have often uh, faced this situation where we might sometimes say, no, you must meditate. And then the other says, no, you must do this first. You know, if you are just meditating, uh, what will the monks have to he eat? Where will the temples be? You, all are, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? That is That happens when we compare ourselves. But we must understand and be okay with the fact that we are having different bases. Yeah. Mm. That's it. That really is it. Right? And in understanding that, we are okay with that as well. But 
we are able to develop ourselves and all of that, that is true and fine. But that is the extent of the activities that is done or the conclusions, no, not conclusion, by the pathway of cognition followed by that yonso or ionso manskara that is wholly based on your capabilities and your supporting knowledge and wisdom. Mm, yeah, and right view, I presume. Yeah. That you have. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That you have. Right mm -hmm. now, for example, I was having a conversation with my very, very dear uh, auntie, who is, of course, a devotee, but, you know, she's like family to me because she's known me for years and years. So, uh, so she has released about one, about 200 cows, you know, she loves to release cows, you know, so we were, she called me New Year's night and, you know, we were just chatting. And then she's, she was telling me about the cows and I said, you're releasing cows and make, you know, those people are buying more cows because you're releasing so much of cows, right? <laughs> so we fight, we are very close, so we fight also. So, <laughs> so, 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 so you see for her, you know, that was, that was all right. She was like, you know, it's okay, you know, be quiet. You don't need to comment on it. You know, I like doing it. <laughs> I was like, no, you be quiet. This is what you're doing. <laughs> But you see, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was just a jovial conversation. But, but you know, in her view, she's right. In my view, she's wrong, and I'm right. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So you know that is a trait. We must mm -hmm. recognize the fact that we have different pathways of thinking or different sort of backing that we have, and we are okay with it. Mm. And we are okay with it, right? So that is wholly on those aspects that you have developed or you have basically, you know, that is it, right? Mm. So that is what we recognize by or with. So the aspect of Yons Manskara or Ayonsu Manskara would be, um, would be, would be wholly based on what your fundamental or foundations are. It is nothing to do with the foundations and fundamentals of the world. However, how is it then deemed as Yonsu or Ayonsu Manskara because of the existence of the roots, right? That is where there is then a fundamental difference between Yonsu Manskara and Ayonsu Manskara, mm. right? Yonsu Manskara and Ayonsu Manskara. That is the, there the differentiation occurs. Mm. Okay, someone did I answer your question? Yes, thank you, Bante. Thank you. Yeah. So that will exist in all chittas. Yeah, yeah. That will exist in all chittas, both Panchadwara Vajana and Manodwara Vajana. Yeah. And then that Sampajana, clear comprehension? Right. Clear comprehension. Clear comprehension is brought forward. Now, this is another topic, really. Clear comprehension. Now, in the process of, if you are talking about, for example, Sati Sampajana, Right. Yeah. When now the aggregate being or the predominant aggregate being Sati, right? Mm -hmm. Sati Sampajanya is promoted by what? Sati? Mindful. Sati. Sati. What do you think? Mindfulness and wisdom. Right. Mindfulness and wisdom. So what chittas, right? But by what chittas is Sati Sampajanya then promoted? It's very easy. What are the chittas that Sati Sampajanya can be promoted by? Beautiful chittas. Beautiful chittas. Beautiful chittas. It can't, Sati Sampajanya will not arise with any of the Akusalanu. Sati Sampajanya will not arise with any of the Ahetuka. Sati Sampajanya will not arise with regards to anything which is bad or weak. It will always arise where the good roots are. Mm. So Sati Sampajanya Samanta will arise in consciousnesses and consciousness streams which take as object the Sobana Kusala Chittas and in Arahans the Kriya Chittas, the functionals. Understood? Yeah, I was just you, thinking so. If I was... then un... Okay, yes, Samanta, please, yes. Sorry, I was just thinking, so if I were to go and steal something really carefully, 
uh, from a shop, making sure no one is watching me and etc. Blah blah blah. So I can still do that with a sati, uh, you know, really good sati, can't I? Sati clear comprehension. My so <laughs> <laughs> You're giving me ideas for Dhamma talks. Okay, keep them coming. <laughs> no, it can't. Why? Because sati, when it comes to uh, words or sort of parts of Dhamma, such as, for example, samma sati, sati sampajanya, mm. remember. As Dil pointed out, or Dil reminded us, it is sati and wisdom. Wisdom will not arise with stealing. Delusion arises with stealing, which gives you the idea that you could steal with wisdom. Mm, greed, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Do you understand? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, yeah. so for examples, so for example, yes, you can steal with a heightened amount of sati. Yes, you can. You can, you can, you you can. Sure. However, it will not be Sati Sampajan. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Now, now, for example, when you're trying to steal some warm cookies or something before dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or, or, or maybe to give it to uh, or, give to, or give it to someone who's suffering, you know, and they need it badly. Mm. So someone is uh, dying or something, a friend. All right. Stealing for someone or, you know, a bit like the Robin Hood story. Yeah. Yeah. I know Robin oh, yeah. Hood. <laughs> so, Bhante, you're really referring to these. So these are the, the, the beautiful factors, isn't it? So the, the mindfulness, which is at right on top on 29, and then the Panindriya, which is the wisdom faculty. Yes. Yes. yes, it has to always be together. But to continue on Samantha's thing, Samantha's question, um, can you steal? Stealing for a, a stealing for a good cause, is it a good thing? Now, stealing comes down to the consciousness to say, Theya Chitta, the consciousness to steal. The consciousness to steal, the Theya Chitta, is what stealing is at the end of the day. Right now, let us say I'm going to steal something. Yeah, I'm going to steal something. So, in the uh, this is explained in greater detail in the Vinaya with regards to the bhikkhus, you know, uh, because bhikkhus can uh, come into the offense of stealing in five different ways, which is ex explaining great detail. For example, one is Tana Chaveya, right? For example, Tana Chaveya is. Now, if I'm supposed, if I'm to sort of explain what Tana Chaveya is, now let's say, okay, you know, so this is the table, right? And then there is something on the table um, now which I want to steal. Tana Chaveya is, now, for example, there is a circumference of this jar, isn't it? Right? You move the jar across the radius, right? Um, and move it further away from the whole circumference. When you have, and you put it down, that's when Tana Chavayoka, that is, that means moving it from the place it was in with a mind of stealing. For example, this is one of the ways, right? So when that happens, so it depends, so we have different objects, so different objects have different ways of stealing them, right? So for example, uh, remember when uh, who was the monk who stole the Datu from the Nagaloka? Remember the story? The monk who stole the Datu from the Nagaloka and he, and when the Naga came to check, he put it uh, on the, it was on the ground and he sort of hid it uh, from the feet or something. Remember that story? No? You don't remember? Right. So that is, you know, to sort of, there is also the, this, this is a cute thing that little monks do. Yeah. So for example, when, uh, when you serve the dana, right, let's say something, something exciting, like let's say sausages or something exciting that the little ones like, right. And, and, you know, sometimes they want more of it. So they hide, you know, some of it under the rice. <laughs> 
<laughs> right now this is also something which is which comes under stealing in um, in the vinay right where you hide something to get more <clears throat> right which comes under so in that way what the buddha explains is at the end of the day it is always a theya chitta the consciousness to steal if one is to do an action out of or with the um with the volition to steal that becomes stealing the hence, theta, hence for example but of course if you then it comes to a comparative level where what is of greater sin what is of lesser sin would be knowing that stealing is bad you steal knowing that stealing is bad you don't want to steal but you absolutely have to do it when there is a sort of fear of stealing that is when the level the karma developed through stealing is lesser however it will always be whether it was sardiel or or or, or robin hood robin hood or you know or whoever it is stealing yeah. will always be stealing but of course the karma would be less with regard to why you are stealing for example if you are stealing it for yourself the karma would be quite high if you are happy about the fact that you are stealing the karma would be quite high yeah right samantha yeah so the there chetana, is no righteous stealing really no i suppose the chetana will have a effect on it then i suppose isn't it yes chetana will have an effect on it but it will not the chetana will not uh, cure the act no. committed yeah. through the theya chitta yeah yeah right. thank you this is yeah. this is also similar to the conversation about white lies and black lies yeah right lies are lies according to buddhism yeah. lies will be lies yeah. and lies are with the intention to uh deceit not deceit uh deceit no deceit deceive deceive deceive, deceive. deceive. Mm. deceive. right yeah. the intention to deceive is lying yes right? so yeah. if one needs to do anything with the intention to deceive it is a lie now then for example when it comes to we know um um the the uh, samya prayoga samya prayoga right samya prayoga i i'm imagine that some of you know about it samya prayoga is where you tell the absolute truth right for example someone uh, someone is to ask okay there is someone hiding under under this table right is someone is to ask did you see this person i'm saying this person is not here and i tap on the table to sort of give the hint that the person is not on the table but yet the person is under the table do you get it however this is called samya prayoga it is not lying it is telling the absolute truth however if you have to say the absolute truth with the intent to deceive it is lying yeah, yeah. do you get it yes yeah. yeah right so really it comes down to the consciousness which underlines yeah. what you do mm. yeah with the greed hatred right? so 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 this is if if it is rightly done if the samya prog is rightly done how what your intention should be at that moment is to really tell the person no no he is not here and you, you know it has to be something that you really mean he is not on the table <laughs> right you can't sort of you know have the intention of lying about it yes yes yeah right? all yeah. right thank you bante can we move on then yes thank you right um all right third para an independent mind or process occurs when any of the six objects enters an independent mind or process occurs when any of the six objects enter the range of cognition entirely on its own right entirely on its own meaning not prompted by any of the five sense doors not as a consequence of an immediately preceding sense door process the question may be raised how an object can enter the range of the mind door independently of approximate sensory impingement 
Lady Seadu cites various sources through what was directly perceived earlier. One, right? You might want to highlight or put a star or mark that place as important. One, through what was directly perceived earlier or by inference from what was directly perceived or through what was learned by oral report or by inference from what was learned by oral report on account of belief, opinion, reasoning, or reflective acceptance of a view, right? On account of belief, opinion, reasoning, or reflective acceptance of a view, right? When um, acceptance of a view, is that clear? By power of karma, psychic power, disturbance of the bodily bodily humors. Disturbance of the bodily humors. What does that mean? Disturbance of the bodily humors. Hmm. Uh, okay, I think they are the um is the, it talking about the elements? Phlegm, ah. uh, pitta, sem, the elements. Okay. Sanipata, yeah. Yeah, the are they referred to as humors as well? I'm sure that is what it means. Yeah, yes, but I didn't know that that word is used that way. Okay, all right, humors. The influence of a deity, comprehension, realization, etc. He explains that if one has clearly experienced an object even once, at a later time even after a hundred years or in a future life, dependent on that object, a condition may be set for the vibration of the Bhavanga, the mind that has been nurtured on such an input, input of prior experiences is extremely susceptible to their influence. When it encounters any sense object, that object may trigger of in a single moment, mental wave extending to many thousands of objects previously perceived. Right? The, the, I think it is easy to understand, let's say, um, if we are to remember or if we are to experience if we are to experience a moment of great happiness or great despair in a certain location, right? In a certain location. For example, let's say um, the Borella Kanata, <laughs> right? Or, you know, either Raymond's or um, what's that other place there? Jaiva. 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 Of course, you know, Jai Ratna. So everyone that you know, everyone that you know, a loved one who might have, you know, been cremated there or isn't it, right? Now you, maybe it's 20 years ago, 30 years ago. However, when you go through that and when you see, you know, you must have lost a lot of friends there or you must have said goodbye to a lot of people there. However, you know, those special ones, maybe our parents, you know, uh, so every time that I go through Jairathans, I remember my father, right? So it's something like that, you see. Those are triggers, right? Certain, certain locations, right? Those triggers, those connections that you had, those strong triggers trigger certain memories. After 10 years, 5 years, 20 years, still when you go through that area, you remember certain things. Right. And I'm sure for you all that is all because you all are living here and you go back, you know, and you, you sometimes you see these things and, you know, it's something of that sort. So just imagine in this, what it, what is mentioned here is a vibrational trigger, a vibrational trigger. These vibrational triggers are much, much more sensitive than the gyratnas. Right? Because these vibrational triggers connect to, to various amounts of similar vibrations or consciousnesses with a base vibration. For example, 
a certain consciousness which was developed in a certain moment let's take a moment of grief or a moment of anxiety how that moment of anxiety or grief sort of amalgamates all the sadness that you have gone through during a specific period of time right now that happens more on a vibrational level than anything else more of a vibration level than anything else those connections actually even when we sort of learn and study to be um, teachers meditation teachers and all of that and even um, you know i we are taught how to not create triggers right how to not create triggers for example sometimes there are episodes where meditators uh, experience certain disturbing behaviors which can you know i I've, i've mentioned certain examples to you all right how you know sometimes meditators start speaking in tongues how you know different things that actually happens right how we manage that situation without creating a trigger where now the meditator would not be able to meditate in the future right these can be physical or mental or attitudinal however these are all triggers connecting certain experiences with feelings consciousnesses vibrations locations and things of this sort right things of this sort so that is what that is a very sort of a grosser example to what which is said here remember when we spoke about ahetuka chittas we spoke about when a rootless consciousness or actually when we perform a akusala or a a wholesome or unwholesome act this wholesome or unwholesome act gives rise to many energies and through the javanas now we know right through the javanas now we know how much of different energies are produced just within even just within one vithi cycle right now these vithis within the javana that we have discussed already we have the energies which give result within this very birth energies that give result in the very next birth energies that give result from the birth after up until enlightenment energies give result even after enlightenment right these are the variations of energy and remember whenever it is a very great object we will have all of these javanas going on at a, even at a level of great object we will have all of these vibrations going on meaning we are creating instances or creating energies that will affect us in this life the next life from the life following up until enlightenment and at the age of enlightenment as well right so these vibrations through these triggers that we set will come and arise at moments when those similar triggers are experienced you know which is a sort of you know a very subtle hint at how karma or the energies of karma would work have i confused you no i hope not can you repeat that please bante yes um yes anything anything uh, anyone has a specific question before i repeat it again vibration or intensity what are you talk about vibration or intensity or the strength vibration which one you are talking about vibration when you say vibration you say uh, it depend on the vibration yeah. but it should be the strength or the intensity of the action yeah the strength well, with with regards to what are you talking damseri ah uh, when you are talking okay we, you uh, you commit a uh, uh, unwholesome act okay right you have a certain amount of strength or intensity in it depending depending on how you commit that unwholesome act so depending on that strength rather than vibration it it goes to uh Uh, it reproduces uh, results this 
this birth or next birth or birth after until you uh, uh, yeah. get enlightenment. Yeah. So in that case, it's strength. Strength, yeah. It is okay. Strength. Yeah. But okay. in terms of trigger, it's vibration. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. In terms of trigger, it is vibration. In terms of um, uh, the javana, it is always the javanas are always strength. St okay. Stress javanas okay. impulsions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Impulsions okay. are always about strength, and when we, this would arise again, is vibrational. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. So if I may repeat that again, do, do most of you all want me to repeat it again? I will repeat it anyways. I just yeah, want to know. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so when we are okay. Alright. So, so when an action is performed, when an action is performed, the through the strength of the great and the very great, the very great and the great, through the jhanas, we produce different frequencies of karmic vibration. These karmic vibrations give rise to different karmic results in the future. At this very moment, the, the ability that we have to see, hear, smell, taste, and feel are all karmic resultants. We know that this ahetu, isn't it? Right? Ahetu resultants, kusala and akusala is what enables this, these five sense doors to operate. Right? These karmic resultants, these karmic resultants, according to just as the Jairatnas that we spoke about, you know, we are not thinking about our fathers, we are not thinking about anyone in specific, but the moment that we cross that place, or the moment that we enter into a house or a location that we have had a very good experience or a very bad experience, you know, just like, for example, one may experience when you see your old schools or your universities, you have this sense, this remembrance of so many um memories that you have not even thought about in so many years right that is the vibrational frequency that you have create mental triggers with with that location with that feeling right so these feelings these feelings for example you have been for example people who live with abusive partners for example um, this vibrates this collects on this collects on in a way where now it sort of uh, causes your your confidence, your self esteem. You know all of these things to sort of personalize to you, all because you know you have you create these certain triggers which are activated with certain with similar vibrational frequencies, which can be brought about by temperature, which can be brought about by the season, which can be brought about by something physical, which can be brought about by feeling, which can be brought about by different segments that is mentioned in that paragraph that we have just read, right? By, by all of those things, what it initially does or how it initially works out or plays out is where we connect that energy to a similar we connect that energy to a similar feeling, place, and all of that we, which we have gone through. So when we do go through that kind of an area or place or feeling, we get those sort of barrage of emotions sort of coming in again, right? For example, the day, let's say, if you have had a loved one, like a very special one, like a person who's your mother or your father, who has passed away just on that day you know you have so many memories of this person right now the day yes it's just the day that that person died but because of the trigger that you have created in your mind you have all of these sort of memories you might not show it but you have these memories oh this is the day that my mother died or this is the day that my father died. you have all these memories of your childhood and all of that right those triggers hinting at how this karma might also be working. The karma is surely sort of more complex than that for sure. However, it is hinting at how these karmic energy processes might actually be. 
right? So, for example, this is one of the reasons that we've been many occasions expressed on the fact of not to fear death, because the more that you fear death, death as an experience creates a trigger to sort of bring out fear. Thus, creating dosa mula chitta, dosa mula chitta is giving rise to unfavorable births. Again, triggers that we create through cultural norms and religious traditions that we have, we believe is, you know, which is. Right? Yeah, understood. You know, so that is what we were, that, that is what I was trying to explain. Right? I'm sorry for making it so complicated. <laughs> Thank you, Bhante. Yeah. Yeah. Bante, last question. Yeah. What's the, what's the, uh, Bante, what's the, um, the Pali word if you have uh, for the vibration, you say? Is it, uh, do you have any specific Pali word for that? Uh, vibration should be there. Chalana. Yeah. Chalana. Chalana. Chalana? Yeah. Chalana. Oh, Chalana. Chalana. Okay. Chalana. Chalana. Yeah. Ah, right, right, right. Oh, okay. Because um, the, the reason why you ask is actually a lot of, um, uh, you know, different, uh, you know, the, there are some uh, uh, various groups you have, uh, what do you call the, uh, uh, the even um, the Hindus and Vastu? they talk about, they, they, <laughs> they talk about uh, uh, vibration so uh, so the uh, actually it's it's a uh, challenge it's almost like a word is uh, excitement yeah get the, uh, yeah yeah okay yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay but thank you very much me was too. unfortunately i'm not that lucky <laughs> 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 okay, thank you. Thank you, Bhante. But remember, when, when we use the word vibration, of course, uh, yeah. what I'm thinking also, Damsri, is yeah. remember when I'm what I mean by the actually what I mean by the word vibration is more like frequency. Yeah, okay, yeah. Right. More than chalana, because when, when I heard yeah. about chalana, I was like, oops, no, that's not what I'm trying to say. Okay. It's more like frequency. Frequency. And, and, and the identity of that frequency. Okay. I, I understand now. No? Yeah, so, I understand because uh, you have to have the same frequency in a situation where I actually increase the effect. Mm. I, I guess it's called. I, it, 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 would it be very. Would it be more accurate to say the same frequency or the same conditions or similar condition for such a frequency? Yeah, similar okay. condition for this. Yeah, or same frequency. Or in because uh, I'm more inclined to science. So when you have two frequencies, the same frequency, then it generates the result, which is the, the resonance. Resonance is actually yeah, that's, multiplication that's, of it. Yeah. 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 Exactly. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. Okay. Um, any more questions? Anyone? Okay. Can I ask something? It's very, it's quite a simple one. So obviously, the vibration of the Bhavanga then sets off a Chittaviti, isn't it? Vibration of the Bhavanga sets off. Starts off, I mean. Is it the beginning of a... Because that's the second step in a Chitta Vita, the isn't vibra it? The vibra Remember, I think we read this before, last class. The vibration of the Bhavanga is really the ending of the Bhavanga. Ah, right? Right, right. And stepping on to... Yes. Within, within the Chitta Vita, we take it as a part of the Chitta Vita process. So we can really say that it is the ending of the Bhavanga or the starting of the Chitta Yeah, okay. However, it is it is like that um, it is like that um, uh, that moment of sort of uh, change. Mm. That moment of metamorphosis which happens from a streamlined Bhavanga into a mind with an object. Okay, right. If I say, I'm sorry, hold on. No. If I say mind with an object, that is actually wrong because Bhavanga also has an object, right? Okay. 
it is a mind with a object different to the bhavanga right. which is the sense do or the manodwara vachana mm. right so really sort of really sort of something vibe something which is rather vibrating the consciousness from it sort of usual process which would be there mm. which is the bhavanga because the bhavanga is more like that underlying sort of process that always happens at the absence of a external object yeah to right. it yeah and then it will should lead to the arrest bhavanga to the arrest uh, to the stop of bhavanga to so that stopping of the bhavanga what we call uh, chalana bhavanga and uh, bhavanga upachcheda the third step bhavanga bhavanga chalana bhavanga upachcheda bhavanga upachcheda yeah that and it carries on like that from there yes yeah okay thank you yeah uh bante so, i am sorry you had something to ask no bante i just wanted to say the bhavanga ends uh, in my understanding at the uh, bhavanga upacheda yes okay not yeah. bhavanga chalana no 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 okay. bhavanga upacheda okay thank so, you being ready for that ending of that bhavanga you know mm. really mm. that process it's a it's the process of ending sure yes right yeah thank you samsari yeah um, my understanding was actually the reason for bhavanga vibration is your external object that's cause your bhavanga to vibrate yeah whatever the object right that cause bhavanga to excite mm. you know like you you try to kick something Mm. Yeah. It, yeah it it maybe you have a very soft kick yeah. it might not uh, uh, topple so if you kick it hard it will topple same way the external object will actually influence your bhavang and get excited and then if the uh, external object is strong enough then you create bhavang to uh, uh, cease Oh, sure. yeah. That's that's the correct way of understanding. I hope. Yes. The, well, oh. it's wholly dependent. It's wholly dependent on the attention that is grasped. Yeah. Yeah. Right. However, now, for example, if we are to take a moment of, if we are to take a moment of like sleeping, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, at that moment, our whole consciousness. is devo- if, if, no it would be wrong to say it's devoted however at that moment if we are in deep sleep we would be in a position where we are in deep bhavanga right yeah. and remember when you are in a position of deep bhavanga it is very difficult to wake that person up mm. right so apparently arahants used to sleep like absolute dead bodies <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah, one would one would actually hope isn't it we would hope i was very surprised to learn this really because we i really hope that arahants would be very uh, light sleepers you know they would just get up <laughs> to see you know they yeah. sleep like <laughs> it is apparently very very difficult to uh, wake Take them up, up you know because obviously the um, the deep the ability to go into this state of deep bhavanga right yeah. and similarly with the samadhi object it's again very similar or the absorption object where you do not hear smell taste feel uh feel due yeah, to yeah, those yeah. moments that you are in because of the mm. commitment that one has or rather not commitment but that settled nature that one has yeah. in that object at that time yeah now if we would take then the the process of waking a person up right some people are very easy to wake up some people are quite difficult to wake up right now in both of those processes the attention is is not the only thing which is now uh, in focus isn't it if we take that example because sometimes yeah. the it is not more than a change of attention it is more of the disturbance that is caused yes Mm-hmm. which gets more priority yeah 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 mm-hmm. right the disturbance in turn disrupting the continuance of the bhavanga or that specific object it is yeah, like yeah. your so it is like 
it is like you're very very um you're very attentive on what is going on let's say you're studying or watching something or whatever it is and then this person who is in the room consistently tries to disturb you not disturb you but rather takes your attention away right now that is more of the attention switch it is more of, rather than talking about it with regard in a way of saying that it is a shift of attention which it is in a way it is really the disturbance of the attention yeah yeah right so i feel like in certain because we did speak about this before and i feel like whilst we say that awareness is one of the main causes and factors of this switch we must also speak about in certain terms the disturbance too that said awareness yeah mm. is it because if we if we even take for example bhavanga bhavanga chalana bhavanga upachet if we even we try to hang on to the bhavanga there mm. but you see after the bhavanga upachet the chakku chakku vinyana pancha you the other consciousnesses don't have any problem moving from one to the other mm. however when it comes to the bhavanga it is almost as if the attention you know you're you're trying to grapple on to the bhavanga but your attention is rather being pulled and sort of refaced into another direction almost mm. right in a way that because we did speak about the power of the object as well didn't we mm, yeah the power of the object increasing with or having one mind moment the power of the object now increasing to a level where now that object can give rise right so really while there are, there seems to be different factors which are happening or at play which causes this shift of attention mm. right and according to anyamanya pachcha mutual conditioning there would be more than one cause and effect isn't it a cause going into the effect of it interesting isn't it uh, bante so when bante can i just ask something please mm. Mm. so so when you're talking on the disturbance we want to depends on the power of the objects in addition to the awareness or well, the three different things so you have awareness and then you have the disturbance with bhavanga and you have the power of the object so you isn't when the disturbance with the bhavanga would be both power of the object as well or would there be a different thing that affects I think I think with with regard yes when it comes to disturbance we only can speak about disturbance when it comes to the bhavanga mm. right okay. uh, when it comes to the bhavanga um, I think the word which is used is distortion right okay yeah. uh, right distortion right mm. right uh, and uh, and when it comes to what's the other word that he used the way I understand the uh, the power of the object. Mm. Now, what we were talking about the disturbance and distortion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Disturbance like, and distortion. Clearly, there is distortion. There yeah. is the awareness. There is surely the power of the object as well. Yeah, that's true. You know? yeah. Because yeah. if there is no power of the object, if someone yeah. starts banging yeah. on my door, then I yeah. will not be shifting my attention to the door. Right. Yeah, is power of the object will also right. play a role. Right. So, Bancha, right. what you are telling in in single is was really this stream of consciousness. has got the atida bhavanga the past one it has got the vibrational bhavanga which is got the charana bhavanga and then it's also got the aris bhavanga which is upacheda then going to the pancha dwara and then the chakku vinyana or what are the other so that's the stream that goes thank you bab thank you yeah yeah any other questions uh, bante would they, the kalesas would they have a and the anusya kalesas do they play a part as well sure yeah that will play a part in even the bhavangas mm because the anusaya kalesas the anusayas would be so uh found so so deeply rooted to mm. our consciousness stream right because it is in it is because of the anusaya that we are actually reborn mm. isn't it yeah yeah the avidya and tanha within the anusayas is what causes rebirth mm. right so the whole reason that we cling from one mind moment to another mind moment the whole reason that we mundane people are not able to access 
kriya or functional chittas is because of that tanha and abhijja which is displaced within our consciousness streams, which is actually a result of the anusayas. Mm. It is, it is, it is some, it is somewhat like you know, if you run, you will sweat. You know, it yeah. it is there. It is going to be there. If you have skin, you're going to your skin is going to decay. Or I'm sorry, age or what not. You know, it is so fundamentally connected the, into this existence. So yes, absolutely, Samantha. The anusayas mm -hmm. will have a predominant role in the part that it plays. The anusayas are going to keep one. That is why Arahan sleeps so well because the touch of anusay is not there. Mm, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So they have no problem going into Babanga. They have no problem having a good night's rest. They have no problem sleeping peacefully and sleeping without fear. Right. Because we have all of that garbage with us. We have night. We have daydreams, nightmares, dreams. We wake up in the middle of the night. We can't sleep. We are fearful. We have anxiety. All of that which comes with the, <laughs> with the anusayas. Right? Conditioned by avidya and tanha. Mm. Conditioned by avidya and tanha. Mm. Right? So yes, Thanks. of course. Right? Even even our even the kusalas that we do are affected affected sorry affected by the anusayas. Mm. Even the kusalas that we do. Yeah. Any other questions? Bante, uh, we yes. talked about we talked about cognition and recognition, uh, and uh, recognition we, uh, due to our past experiences, we, we recognize the objects. Then is it same as perception, perceived? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same but, as perception. Uh, yeah, Sanya. Yeah. Sanya is. Remember, Sanya is also, um, uh, Sanya is one, it's part of our aggregates. Sanya yeah. is part of our mental stream. You know, Sanya plays a role there. Yeah. Right? Remember, in the perception of the five aggregates, five aggregates shows, you know, five aggregates, although the, you know, we have a sector of teaching which di divides the five aggregates, remember that these are all Nam and Rupa. So sanya is very much a part and parcel. Without sanya, consciousness does not arise. Yeah. Right? So perception is there. Right? This perception, this perception, it is by link to this perception that we are able to learn to take up new habits, take up to sort of um, um, uh, repeat things to, you know, even as uh, babies or even as uh, living, you know, uh, being within the mother's womb and yet grasping uh, emotions and experiences that affect your, uh, your brain through the sounds that the baby would hear from the surrounding of the mother, right? That is all Sanya, of course, in a much, much more subtle in a, in a much, much more subtle way. However, remember, uh, although the sanya is subtle, the child's, the, the brain is also empty. Uh, the mind is also empty. Thus, the absorption rate is high. That is what Lady Sadhu explains. Right? Yes, the sanya, the chakku vinyana, all of these things are there, very weak. However, because the mind is empty, Mind is empty. I think you understand what I mean now. Yeah, yeah. Our minds are not empty. We have different philosophies. We have our habits and characters and personalities and all of these things that we have picked up from decades and decades of life. Right? The child does not. The baby does not. Yeah. Right? So the absorption rate is high. Right? So that is why now, for example, when you meditate and you study, you are able to grasp the knowledge or grasp the data much, much more easily. Why? Because you are able to clear your mind and focus upon what you're studying. Yeah. You know, it is not a miracle. It is not a miracle. Right? So, yes, Pushpa. Yeah. Yeah. Thank right? you. It is Sanya. All yeah. right. So we will uh, finish the class today. 
I will see you. It's eight thirty. It's eight thirty. It passed by so fast. Right. Right. So.